Okay, so go back to the course of sort uh, introduction to algorithms. So in this week we will talk about the sorting algorithms. So far we covered only searching algorithms. So uh, we covered depth first search, right? Uh, depth first search goes as deep as possible and as far or maybe as far as possible. And uh, mostly it uses using recursion, right? Uh, and um, of course, it can you can implement uh, DFS iteratively, like through the for loop. But in that case, again, you need to use additional data structure, which is a stack. And um, second one was about the BFS, which is a breadth first search. So uh, breadth first search uh, tries to first cover the closest um, vertices or closest nodes, and usually um, it's implemented using the for loop or while loop. And uh, in order to implement the BFS, you need to use Q. Um, and uh, uh, when you need to find the closest vertex. Uh, if you have two choices, you need to use BFS because uh, BFS checks the uh, closest uh, nodes vertices first, right? Uh, meanwhile, the DFS goes as far as possible, and uh, uh, as a result of the DFS, you can find the, the the longest path. Meanwhile, if you use BFS, you will find the shortest path. Uh, again, like I provide example of this, for example, graph, right? So let's say that we have A, and we need to find the shortest path to the B, right? And uh, if you use B, uh, DFS, DFS can go in this way, right? Uh, BFS starts to look the closest vertices first, it looks to this one, and it looks to this one, and of course, the BFS finds this shortest path. And um, uh, this both of them actually initially, the main idea is to to do the search on a, a graph data structures. But uh, as I showed on the practices, as I showed on the lectures, uh, you can apply the DFS B, uh, or, B, uh, or BFS on the problems where you have the many options and you need to consider all of them. In, this, on, in those problems, you can apply these searching algorithms. And the third one is the binary search. So binary search, uh, also very specific algorithm. If we take uh, the binary search in terms of the time complexity, it uh, takes a big O of log n, right? Uh, so it's logarithmic time complexity, which is quite uh, efficient. And uh, if you, um, in order to apply the binary search, uh, you need to have some specific input data. For example, uh, you need to have uh, sorted array or maybe sorted lists, but the data should be sorted, right? And uh, another two requirements is that that you need to know the uh, the borders, like area where you need to apply your binary search. Um, and the next part of the, our uh, introduction to algorithms is about sorting. Uh, so in this lecture, I will talk about the bubble sort, selection sort, insertion sort, merge sort, and quick sort. Okay, so uh, first one. It's a bubble sort. So bubble sort is a sorting algorithm that works repeat repeatedly by swapping the edges and elements if they are in the wrong order. Okay, and the time complexity, as you can see, is big of n square. Uh, I will tell you why the time com the, the, com the time complexity is big of n square uh, a little bit later. Or you can see. Uh, uh, why is the, temp the time complexity is like this during the uh, explanation of the bubble sort? So let's say that we have this kind of unsorted array, right? 
So uh, bubble sort takes the first two elements. This is the first iteration, by the way. It's like we're creating some for loop, right? And inside of the for loop, we have uh, one iteration. And during the uh, first iteration, we compare the first two elements. We compare five and one. And um, we see that the next element, which is one, is bigger than uh, previous element. So we swap them. We swap, and uh, after we have one and five, right? And on the next step, uh, we compare five and four. Uh, we see that the next element is less than the previous element, so we again swap them, right? Um, on the next, we compare five and two. So uh, we compare five two, and we see that. 5 is bigger than 2, so previous element is bigger than the next element, so we again we compare them. And on, on the next, uh, we compare 5 and 8, and we see that the next element is bigger than the previous element, so we don't do any swaps, we uh, leave it as it is. So this is just the first iteration. Okay. On the second iteration, we again start from the beginning of the array. And we compare 1 and 4, and we see that the 4 is bigger than the 1, so we don't do anything. Then uh, on next, we compare 4 and 2, and we see that the next element is, uh, is less than the previous element, so we swap them, so our array becomes like this. Then uh, we compare 4 and 5 we see that the next is bigger than the previous, so we leave it as it is. Then um, we compare 5 and 8, and uh, eight, the next element, which is 8, is bigger than the 5, so we leave it as it is. So um, on the next, the next iteration is just uh, like a uh, check, is array sorted or not? So if, if we don't do any swappings during the iteration, it means that um, it means that our array is already sorted. So we don't do anything, and, uh, and it means that we don't we can finish our uh, our sorting. <coughs> and uh, one characteristic of the bubble sort is that. Uh, after the, for example, first iteration, right, the biggest element will go to the end after the first iteration. It, it will happen always uh, because, like, when we meet the, for example, the biggest element in the beginning of our array, we will like always swap them with the next element, with the next, and then with the next, then with the next, and in the end, the biggest element always will reach the last position. In the end of the, our first iteration, okay, and in the second iteration, the second largest element will take the, its own place. So this is one of the uh, main characteristics of the bubble sort. So on the next, um, I'd like to talk about the pseudocode of the bubble sort. Let's say that we have uh, some list, some array of items, right? Then uh, we create variable loop and we give the size of the, our array and we say that uh, we create some for loop and this for loop will run from the zero to uh, loop minus one and we create some variable uh, some bool variable swap and by default we say it's equal to the false. Uh, we need this uh, variable in order to check like is our uh, is our array is sorted or not? Check is sorted. Okay, uh, and inside of the for loop, we create another for loop, and this for loop uh, will run from the zero to again to the size of the to the end of the our array. And inside of the for loop, we compare uh, the next element 
with the previous element. So if we see that the previous element is bigger than the next element, so we swap them. And we say that uh, swap true, so it means that at some point of our uh, like uh, checking the next element with the previous, we did some swapping, and then here uh, we finish this inside for loop, say so this nested loop, right? And here if uh, we didn't do any swapping during the, our iteration, like here, we break, so we exit from this for loop, and we just end if, and we exit from the for loop, and that's it, and we in the end just return the sorted list. So as you can see here, because we have two, um, two we, because we have nested loops, one loop inside of the another, that's why the time complexity is uh, the time complexity is big of n square. Okay, and next it's a selection sort. So selection sort algorithm sorts an array by repeatedly finding the uh, minimum element. So if uh, if we need to sort the, uh, our array in ascending order, we first find the minimum element and we put the z uh, minimum element in the, uh, at the beginning of our array, and again the time complexity takes big O of n, squ n square, right? So, for example, um, let's say that we have this kind of unsorted array, and uh, in this unsorted array, we first at first iteration we find the minimum element. So, in this whole range of uh, in this whole array. We need to find the minimum element, which is 11. So we find it and we swap 11 with the first element. So 64 goes to the end, right? And 11 goes to the first place. Uh, so after the first iteration, we have this kind of array. On the next step, we need to find the shortest, uh, not, not short, the minimum element between this range between 25 and 64 okay so uh, so here we uh, find the minimum element which is a 12 so we find the 12 and we put it here so we put 12 here and uh, 12 goes to the second place right so on the next step we need to find the minimum element in this range of the elements and here we again need to find the minimum element which is a 22 so we uh, put 22 like in the beginning of our range so we swap 25 and 22 so 22 goes here right and 25 goes here and 22 goes to in instead of the 25 on the next step we find the shortest the minimum element uh, in this range and here we see that the minimum element in this range stays on the first place in this range, so we leave it as it is. Uh, on the next, we have 64. Um, so 64 is just one element, so we, do, we don't do anything. Okay. Uh, so if we represent the selection sort as a, uh, in a, like a graphical um, illustration, we will get, we'll have... Uh, selection sort like this so we have unsorted array like this right so in this uh, because we have the whole array in the beginning so in this range we find the first the like minimum element which is the one right so we put one so we swap one and eight so one goes here and eight goes here okay then after the first iteration again we move our range so we look for the minimum element in this range right right so here in this range the minimum element is a three so we swap three and uh, the first element in this range so five goes here and three goes here on next, uh, we 
uh, look for the minimum element in this range. So the minimum element is a 5, so we swap it with a 7, right? So 7 goes here and 5 goes here. On next, we uh, again like move this left border to the right, so we look, uh, consider uh, this range, so we find the minimum element which is a 7, so we swap 8 and 7. 7, 8 goes here, 7 goes here. Right. So on the, on the next step, uh, we um, look for the minimum element in this range. So the minimum element is 8, uh, and we swap 8 and 9. Uh, so 9 goes to the end, and 8 goes uh, to the first place. So in the end, we will have this kind of uh, sorted array. So in, as you can see, in the end, we will have, if we count all the like comparisons during the, our selection sort, we will get this number. And uh, the time complexity will be big O of n squared. So uh, here is the pseudocode of the selection sort. So this, uh, we have some array with big A letter. And uh, the size of the array is n. So we have again two like we have nested loop, and uh, the first the first the for loop um, runs between i equal to the one to the n minus one, and we say that mean equal to the so we create some variable mean, and uh, we say that initially the our minimum element is this like um, elements like uh, element at position i. Right, then we get, um, create the, another for loop, and this for loop will run uh, between i plus 1 till the end. So because, it, as you remember, uh, it will uh, look for the minimum element in some range. So uh, inside of the for loop, we repeatedly compare each element with our minimum element, which is the first element in our range. So if some element is less than our minimum element, we say that min is equal to this j, right? Then we, um, uh, after here, like this for loop is necessary for us to find the, uh, the minimum element. So after finding the minimum element, we swap a i and a min. So after that, we exit from, from the for loop and exit from the, our selection sort function. So again, as you can see, because we have the nested loop, uh, the time complexity is big O of n square. So uh, the, f the for loop that is inside of this is looks for the minimum element. And uh, this for loop is kind of like moving our range to the right. So we repeatedly, after exiting this for loop, we repeatedly swap them. On next, uh, we have the insertion sort, right? So um, insertion sort is uh, also a sorting algorithm that runs on, a time, on time complexity is of big O of n square. Um, so iterate, insertion sort iterates the consuming one input element each repetition and growing a sorted output list. Um, so at each iteration, this sorting algorithm uh, like removes one element from the input data and finds the location it belongs to within the sorted list. So uh, it, it will do the sorting until that uh, we don't have any no like we don't have any input elements remaining. So um, we iterate through the array. Uh, we start uh, from the second element. Uh, so we take the index of that and we walk back through the previous elements until we find a small element. So, uh, for example, we take some element, right? And we move back to the beginning of our array. And if we found some uh, element that is less than our current element, then we... Um, 
puts our current element before that smaller stone. So uh, we insert the node element uh, at that point. So for example, uh, we have this kind of unsorted array, right? So uh, we like first we take the first element and again we uh, move back and we see that one uh, before one we don't have any elements, right? So then uh, we take the five and we compare the five with the previous elements and we see that the previous elements um, is less than the five, so we don't do anything. Then uh, we go to the 4 and we start to compare the 4 uh, with the previous element. So here, before 4, we have the 5. So we swap 5 and 4, right? So 5 goes here and 4 goes here. On next step, we compare 2 with all the previous elements. By the way, uh, here, after swapping 5 and 4, uh, we compare 4 with uh, 1. And we see that the one is less than the four, right? On the next step, uh, we compare four and five. Sorry, we compare two with the five. So um, five goes here and two goes here. Then we compare two with the four. We swap two and four, and uh, four goes here, two goes here. So then two, we compare two with this one. And we see that the, this element is less than the 2, so we stop uh, moving the 2. Uh, on the next step, we uh, compare 3 with the 5. So we move 5 to the here. Right? So 3 goes here. Then we compare 3 with the 4. And we see 4 is bigger, so 4 goes here and 3 goes here. Then we compare 3 and 2. Um, so we see that 2 is less than the 3, so we stop uh, swapping them. So in the end, we have this sorted array. So let's take a look at the pseudocode of the insertion sort. So uh, we start, uh, we create some index i, and this i runs from the 1 to the n, right? So we uh, say that like we uh, choose one our current element and we say that uh, it's a um, we create we say that we create that variable and we call it k and we say that k equal to the a at i uh, and um, we create another while loop and we say that this while loop will run while j is bigger than zero and uh, also this while while loop will run while a j aj is bigger than the k um, so we repeatedly um, like swapping uh, all the elements that is bigger than our um, k right here we do some like swapping here and uh, here as you can see again because we have the two for loops uh, the time complexity is big o of n square Right, so uh, here because we have O big uh, big O of on n square, here uh, inside of the for loop we have um, like we like repeatedly swap all the elements before our current element if it is bigger than our uh, k, and uh, this for loop helps us to choose each uh, our current elements. And uh, like in the end, we have the, our sorted array. Um, next sorting algorithm is a quick sort. So quick sorts um, is more complex sorting algorithm than the, all the previous elements, uh, all the previous sortings, right? Because um, and um, on average, the time complexity of the uh, Quick sort is usually big O of n log n, but um, actually the time com it's on average big O of n log n, but actually the time complexity big O of n square and uh, um, it it all depends on one element. In this quick sort we choose some pivot element from the array 
and according to that pivot element we swap like if some element is less than the pivot element we put that uh, like small less elements uh, on the left side of the pivot element right and if some element is bigger than the pivot we put that element on the right side of our pivot in our array so but uh, if we choose wrong um, pivot elements um, in the end we, we could have something like um, we could have very bad time complexity so it all depends on the choosing the right pivot element but uh, if we if we choose the right pivot element in that case the time complexity can be big of n log n so this is the average case so how does the quick sort work for example here we have some sorted array right uh, and here in the sorted array uh, let's choose some pivot for example let's choose 70 so let's say this is a pivot element right so here um, we like divide our array into two parts uh, one part is all the elements that is less than the, this our pivot so we collected all the small elements which is a 10 30 40 and 50 right and uh, on the right side we choose or we collected all the elements that is bigger than our pivot so it's 90 and 80 and here we already so here we divided our array into two parts in the, on the first part we again choose some pivot elements so this 50 is a, our pivot element right and so for this part uh, we collect all the elements that is less uh, than the 50 on the left side and everything that is bigger than our 50 on the right side so as you can see here we don't have any element that is bigger than the 50 that's why this part is empty and uh, here we collected all the elements that is less than the p uh, 50 which is a pivot element and we here again choose a pivot so in this pivot element we uh, put all the elements on the left side so it's 10 and 30 uh, but we don't have anything bigger than the 40 and uh, so here we uh, we have empty right so again we here we choose the pivot in this part and uh, on the 30 we don't have we have we don't have anything bigger than the 30 so and uh, uh, on the left side we have only one element so it means that we are done with the whole this left part of our uh, initial array then we go to the right side and here we have two elements and we choose this as a pivot element all right and again we divide this array into two parts so nothing less than the 80 and 90 goes on the right side uh, so on the right side we have only one element right on the left we don't have anything so um, in the end we like collect all the divided all the divided uh, array into one big array and we will have uh, one big sorted array so another example um, in this example again we have sorted array we choose some pivot which is this one four right so we again put everything that is less than the four on the left and everything bigger than the four on the right so here we uh, iteratively like moving all the big elements to the right side and everything that is less uh, that's why the four like a little bit moving to the left side and in the end so we have this um, kind of array so we divide this uh, array into two parts right so um, here on the left side we again choose a pivot element which is a two and we like dividing this two into two parts uh, on the right side we have the seven as a pivot element 
right? So we um, move our seven uh, to the middle, and we like put everything that's less than seven to the left side, and everything bigger than seven on the right side. So in the end, we have this sorted array. Here is a pseudocode of the um, of the um, of the quick sort, right? So here um, we have the two functions. Uh, first function is called quick sort, and second is partition. So quick sort is um, uh, kind of like um, dividing our uh, our array into two parts right so we have some array and we have some low and high uh, so we have we choose some uh, part pivot element and according to that pivot element we have something like um, like array and low and p minus one and uh, and on other part we have a p plus one and high so here we have the partition so we got the pivot element as a result of the function partition where we send some array with uh, our range low and high so it's low it's left left right left border and high is the right border so um, inside of the partition we create some pivot element right and uh, um, you like usually we take the there's the right right most element in our array and uh, inside of this partition we like putting everything less than the pivot on the left and everything bigger than the pivot on the right so uh, in the end we return um, index of the array where it was divided into two parts so on the next we have the merge sort uh, Merge sort is a efficient general purpose comparison based sorting algorithm. So as you can see the time complexity is big of and log n. Right? So uh, like all the four previous sorting algorithms they run in a time complexity of big of n square. Right? So uh, but like on um, this merge sort is runs much faster than all the previous uh, sorting algorithms. So um, merge sort works as follows: it divides unsorted list into n sublists, and uh, um, each containing one element. So we uh, on the next step we um, repeatedly merge the sorted sublists into the new sorted sublist until there is only one sublist remaining and this one sublist uh, sub array will be uh, the, our final sorted array so uh, merge sort consists of the two parts it's first one is a divide second one is a merge sort okay so here uh, we have this kind of unsorted array so we divide this unsorted array into two parts right uh, then we uh, again divide this divided this part into again two parts uh, and this array also into the two parts then again we divide all this uh, dividing arrays again into the two parts till uh, in the end we have only one uh, element on each sub array so this is a divide part on next we merge them right so we merge when we do merge we also uh, sort them so for example when we again merge 14 and 33 we compare them and we see that the left element is bigger than the uh, right element so we don't do any swappings so we merge, merge them as you can see here um, on next 
we we need to merge 27 and 10 and we see that the right element is bigger than the left element so we swap them and we merge them so we have this subarray uh, on the next we need to merge this and this and we compare them and we uh, see that the right element is bigger than the left element so we swap them right so we have we'll get this uh, subarray then uh, we compare this and this so we see that everything is on the right place we don't do anything so here we um, we uh, we get this subarray on the next um, we compare we need to merge this subarray and this subarray so we compare 14 and 10 uh, we see that the 10 is smaller so we put it here on the first place then uh, we uh, we see that the uh, we compare 14 with the 27 and we see that the 14 is less so 14 goes here on next we compare 33 and 27 27 is less so that's why it's 27 goes third and in the end we have only one element in this part and uh, 33 goes to the end of our subarray then we need to merge um, this subarray and this subarray so we compare 19 and the 42 right so 19 goes um, uh, here right uh, then we compare 35 and 42 so 35 is less that's why it goes here and in the end on the left side we don't have any elements and we put this uh, subarray into into the end of our this subarray and in the end we need to merge this part and this part so we compare 10 and 19 10 is less so 10 goes here then we compare 14 and 19 14 is uh, less than the 19 so 14 goes here uh, then we compare 27 and 19 19 is less so 19 goes here then we compare 27 and 25 27 goes here uh, then we compare 33 and 35 so 33 goes here then in, on the left side we don't have any elements so we put this subarray into here we like connect it to the end of our array okay so in the end we get some sorted uh, array so um, merge sort actually it's implemented using the recursion and um, so recursion means that uh, it will do one side of the it until it will finish one side of the array it will not go to the other side so um, here for example we have this kind of unsorted array so on the first step we divide into the two parts right so here um, on the next step we divide it like this uh, on the third step we divide 38 and 27 right um, then on step 6 uh, we combine these two results by the way here it says step 4 and step 5 here in, in the end it says that we don't have uh, we have only one element in, on each subarray so it, 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 it do nothing so we here merge them we have 27 and 38 right so when we're done with that with this part we see that the here right side is not ready yet so it goes it like backtracks right till this part and start to do the dividing from this part so in the end um, it do same thing to this until this step right uh, then it combines this subarray and this subarray and when it needs to combine with the right side it uh, like backtracks goes back on 
up until to this and uh, start to do the same thing like divide and uh, merge on the right side and in the end we have this uh, sorted list sorted array here is the pseudocode of the merge sort uh, we have some array a and uh, uh, here n is the uh, size of our array and if it is equal to the one we just return the whole array right so here uh, we create uh, two variables l1 and l2 in the l1 we uh, give the one half of the array on the l2 we give the second half of the array so uh, then we like it's recursively do the same thing so we call this merge sort itself right so uh, and uh, it does the same thing with uh, sub arrays then here we have the merge after dividing all the parts we return merge l1 and l2 so first part and second part of our array and inside of the merge we again as i said before in the merge uh, step we uh, we are sorting them at the same time so we say that while a and b have elements and if a0 is bigger than b0 uh, so like the first element on the left subarray is if it is bigger uh, then the uh, big like first element on the right side we add b0 to the end of the c so we like c is actually the new array as you can see so we remove this b0 to the from the b and uh, we it like iteratively do the same we compare each element on the left subarray with the right subarray and do the same thing till the end of our um, till the uh, till end of like when we don't have any elements on the array so uh, guys today we covered five sorting algorithms right uh, so this time um, in this in the end of the lecture I want to check your uh, knowledge about the sorting algorithms so um, it's time to go back and uh, like please um, check yourself okay you can uh, play pa press pause and check what is the time complexity of the bubble sort uh, so the time complexity of the bubble sort is big of n square right uh, what is the time complexity of the selection sort again it's uh, big of n square what is the time complexity of the insertion sort? It's the same of n square. Um, for all of these uh, sorting algorithms, uh, we needed to create the nested loops. We needed to uh, write one for loop inside of the another for loop. Right? On the step number, uh, on the like sorting number four, we have again all of n big O big O of n square and um, again uh, usually the average time complexity of the quick sort is a big O of n log n right but if we choose the wrong pivot elements the time complexity can be big O of n square and the last uh, sorting algorithm is a merge sort and the time complexity of the merge sort is big O of n log n so um, the merge sort like guarantees us that the, our array uh, will be sorted in this time complexity so uh, it's like more efficient than other sorting algorithms as you can see so um, that's it guys thank you very much thank you for your attention